Okay, let's keep on going. Okay, now clip. Now, so far, we have gone to the outside of the right arm. We've gone to the outside of the left arm. Now, what I want to do now is go to the inside of the right. And the way we're going to do this is Cliff is going to lunge with a lower strike. He's going to lunge vertically to my stomach or the solar plexus. And what he does is I'm going to hook it again, but I'm going to step off and move up to circle. Now, one of two things or both can happen. He can pull back. And hopefully, as he pulls back, he's going to go ahead pull. I'm going to cut the fingers and pull the knife out of his hands, providing now that this is razor sharp. If he pulls back at the same time he pulls, he can also pull and push. And that means I'm going to be dealing with what? Obviously, I'm going to be dealing with the other arm. So as you guys do this, uh, you've got to be thoroughly aware of both blades. You've got to know where his knives are, and you've got to know where your knives are at all times. Now, as he steps off, I hook it. As the next blade comes in, I cut again on the high point of the muscle. If I hit it hard enough, and that's no more than an inward block, if I keep this tracked and I hit this hard enough, it's going to cross all the way to the other side of his body, which is going to act as a cross check. Now, at this point, my elbow acts as a check. I'm going to hook, grab both hands, put the wrists together, and I'm going to cut them across each other at this point. And as I cut them, this cuts three quarters of the circle around the right forearm. This cuts the top half of the left wrist. And then this goes ahead and continues cutting. And I'm going to use a forward bow to cut the fingers and finish ripping both knives out of the hand at this point, if you can see it from this angle. All right, notice that after I'm done ripping, I also keep this hand in as a check. Now, with it checked there, let's take it from the beginning. Watch what happens. We hook, we cut, boom, we meet that action, we borrowed force there, now we shuffle forward, use a forward bow, and cut both hands this time. Now what I want you to do, as you cut, I'm going to turn this angle just a little bit. We have one, two, move your arm over just a little more. Now watch the arms cross, and see how they begin to cut each other at this point. Boom. Now, as I trap this, let this cut travel on up around his rib cage and back to the throat. And now, using this as leverage here, I'm going to cut and anchor. I'm not going to twirl him as much as I'm going to anchor him down and spin him. He will land on his back, but I'm going to use the counterbalance with both hands at this point. If you follow me down, I can use a closed kneel. Now, if I cut to the throat, if I drop low enough, I also have to keep one hand. If the other hand comes up, I cross-check them at this point and make a cut with the right hand. But you've got to be aware of these blades at all times. I want you to assume that you never did any damage at all at this point. Keep it in check, run it down, and as you cross out, keep both blades up. Jeff, come on up again. Now watch this again. We'll take it from this angle over here. <coughs> By the position of his blades, it looks as though Cliff's going to lunge, but at the moment I hook, the other blade's going to start coming. I can adjust my technique and immediately go to a knockout punch right underneath the jaw. There's a nice little nerve under there that you can hit. And as I pull here, I can hit, check, and cut the wrist. See the angle of the wrist? And get a knockout point at this, this time. If he's still on his feet, all I need to do is just anchor my arm and it helps control his height and get him back down. Now watch again. As I move, one, two, hit. And at any point in this thing, I can still go back up and make my cuts to both, to both arms and the blade and back up to the throat again. But you notice as I move, I make sure that my knife cross checks as I move around his body this way. I can't afford to have one too high I'll get it in the groin or lower stomach. Can't afford to have one too low, because then he'll contour and track along my own arm. So it's a short, quick move en route to another target. But you've got to know where these knives are at all times. Thank you, Cliff.